In this video, we are going to see the demo of Kubernetes monitoring solution in logging analytics. Going to observability and management and clicking on the solutions menu, which will bring us to the new submenu called solutions. And we have Kubernetes monitoring solution over here. Clicking on the Kubernetes monitoring solution brings us to the listing page of all the cluster. which shows which clusters are currently being monitored. We have a connect cluster workflow over here, which is based upon the add data workflow. So overall, we are going to cover two different topics, how to connect different clusters, OKE, and then how to use the solution for the collected data for troubleshooting and monitoring your cluster. Before we move on to connect cluster, let's look at this listing page here we are seeing one EKS and three OKE cluster, the name of the cluster, when the cluster was connected into logging analytics for monitoring, when the cluster was created, what is the Kubernetes version, how many CPUs, memories, memory is allocated to that cluster, pods, and when was the last telemetry heard from these different clusters. In this case, we heard from the EKS, OKE, and the last OKE cluster three or four minutes back, and we don't know the status of the stage cluster. Clicking on the connect cluster flow brings us to the familiar add data menu. Clicking on Oracle OKE. In this case, we are discovering all the clusters, OKE clusters available in this tenancy in this region. Clicking on, you can select one of the clusters and click next. And we have simplified this workflow. We are saying, hey, this is the cluster name when it was created, how many node pools it has, what different subnets or VCNs are connected to it, different version, so, uh, the Kubernetes version, and the compartment. You can decide to create the policies and dynamic groups automatically. If you already have that, you can uncheck that. If there is a metric server already installed, then you can uncheck this. Otherwise, the solution will automatically install the metric servers. In this case, I'll keep them as is. Finally, you have two options. One, to enable the cluster automatically. In this case, all the monitoring workloads will be deployed right from the UI. Or you can decide to download the configuration and deploy the workloads for management agent for Fluentd from command line. In this case, I'm not going to move forward. One, once I click configure collection, it will create all the required resources, entities, log groups, etc which you can see details over here. All these resources will be created in the compartment that you have selected. Let's go back to the listing page. I'm back on the listing page. Here I see four different clusters and you can click on one of these clusters to go to the solutions page. So I'm clicking on OKE CW24, which brings you to the main analysis solution. Now, we have four different tabs available here, cluster, workload, node, and pod. The left panel is called the summary panel. Here we see the summary of the topology. In this case, there are five different objects which need attention, and 33 are normal. We have 13 namespaces in this cluster, 20 workloads, details of those workloads on how many need attention, how many nodes, and how many pods. In the middle, we see the topology, as we begin with the solution, we see that name all the namespaces connected to the cluster, and we see that demo scheduling, demo volume mount, and demo liveness probe have issues. Below that, we see the pods by different namespaces. These are the specific pods on these namespaces which have issues. The other pods which are distributed by namespaces do not have any issues. The issues are based upon the warning events generated by the Kubernetes system. At the bottom, we have the events panel, which you can expand and see what are the recent warnings which were generated by different objects within this cluster. You can also select warnings only to just see the events which has been categorized as warnings events by the Kubernetes environment. Going back. On the right hand side, we have the telemetry panel where different metrics as well as log based widgets are available. You can scroll through those and look at different metrics 
such as network, API request, as well as CPU and memory. You can click on one of these to look at the expanded view and you can add more metrics to the same panel to analyze them together and correlate. I'll close this and look at a log based widget. In this case, we are looking at OS health based widget where we are showing the trend of all the issues, what we have identified from the nodes, specific messages, and you can drill down into the specific log source and the log records which are coming into troubleshoot. Moving on to the workloads panel, here we see the details of the workloads. Now, one thing you may have noticed, the filters have changed at the top. In the cluster view, we only had namespace available. Now we have workloads and nodes also available. One key difference from Log Explorer here is that we have provided two time ranges, 60 minutes and 24 hours that you can switch between those. And the metrics or the telemetry panel, all the widgets get data based upon the time range selected. Now in the workloads panel, you can see details of different workloads. This is across the cluster because I have not selected any namespaces. Going into node, you can look at the configuration of all different nodes which are part of this cluster, what their age has been, has there been any issues which are reported, what container runtime, Kubernetes version, Kubelet version, memory allocatable memory capacity and the cpu which are which is configured for this now you may have noticed that the pod has been pod uh, view has been changed to pods by different nodes on what which node these different pods are running finally in the lowest level view which is the pods and i can change this back to 60 minutes and these are the different pods which I have by, by default selected has failed. I can say show all and expand, expand all and here I'm seeing different pods which are running on this cluster. Going back to the cluster view. Now let's see how do we can use the filters. Here if I select different namespaces, you see the topology of the cluster here. In the previous view, we were just looking at the namespaces. Now I can see within each namespace what are the different workloads running. In this case, I have these different workloads which are running. They are in the cube system namespace. In the demo scheduling app, I have this Redis follower running. And also it tells us where specific pods are running, on which node those pods are running. You may have noticed also that the pod honeycomb view has changed from namespace to workload. This is to help you narrow down to a specific pod or a specific uh, workload that you're interested in troubleshooting and monitoring. Other thing we should note here is that the metrics on the right hand side, all the telemetry widgets have now been filtered based upon the namespace selected. Let's move on to the workload view. Now we see that the workload filter is now unfrozen because I have selected certain namespaces that I want to troubleshoot or, or monitor. In the workloads drop down, we see the different workloads which are running inside these namespaces. If I select one of these, then the telemetry, also, telemetry charts also change based upon the filters I have selected. I can select multiple of these and same filter is applied to the events panel also. Finally, the nodes filter is also unfrozen at this point because I have made a selection for workloads and it tells me where the pods related to these workloads are running on which specific node. Let's go to the nodes view. I can also select this specific node from here, but I'll go to the nodes view where it will again show me, hey, what are the different nodes and what their configuration has been and where these pods are running. If I select one of the nodes, the metrics as well as the central panel also changes. Similarly, the summary panel on the left hand side also changes based upon the filter selection. 
finally on the pod view i'll click on show all and i have selected these different namespaces in my filters and the workloads running inside those namespaces and the corresponding nodes where these workloads or the pod for these workloads are running and i can look into details of what is happening going back to the cluster view you can right click on one of these topology nodes to remove from filters i can remove this specific namespace from the filter or if i am on a workload or on a specific namespace i can look at the logs so clicking on view logs will bring us the issues visualization which tells us how many new issues have been identified in this case because this issue has been reoccurring for quite some time we haven't identified any new issues this but the kubernetes system is still generating warnings you can do the same thing from the pod view and it will show the issues visualization in the context of that specific pod finally you can go back to the kubernetes solution listing page to connect more cluster or see what different clusters are connected and drill down into those thank you